Hi, and welcome back to episode four of season three of The Canary Room. We've got <clears throat> the return of an old favorite today, a Canary Room classic. I've broken out the check shirt for today's episode. We're also gonna go on the road. We're gonna go have a little look back to a trip that Gerald Spencer and I took uh, to judge in Malta um, in December last year. A fabulous, fabulous trip. We've got Bird of the Week coming up. We've got the Red Pole Diaries. We've got top tips on the show as well. I must just say a huge thank you for those of you who've donated to the show. So a massive thanks to Paul Larkin, to Adam Kendall, to Michael Burling again, thanks Michael, and to Robert Elkin. Guys, thanks very much indeed for all of your support for the show. It really, really is appreciated. So if you're able to and you've enjoyed the show, hit thumbs up, hit subscribe, and just pop a donation. It all covers our costs. Uh, that I incur during the production of the show. Um, so it is very much appreciated. Thank you very much indeed. I must also start with an apology. Um, Cyril Kilday, um, I rechristened him in the Swords uh, episode. Cyril had six of the birds, six of the top seven borders at Swords. Um, and unfortunately, I got his pronunciation of his name wrong. So apologies, Cyril. I'm putting it right now. Um, so six of the top seven at Swords were Cyril's Kill Day, I believe it's pronounced. I'm sure Cyril will let me know if that's not right. Um, we're going to look today at um, a number of different things in the bird room. Um, we're going to look at the cinnamon line um, and how I'm putting that cinnamon line together. Um, we're going to look at um, some of the clear birds as well, uh, as well as all of your favourite features. So, as always, grab a cuppa, make sure it doesn't get seed in it, which mine just has, and enjoy the show. Last time out on the Canary Room, we looked at the formation of the green line and the pairs and the birds that I was going to put together to rebuild the, the green line. <clears throat> Um, viewers to the show will know that we've had a, a love, hate, despair relationship um, with the cinnamons. Um, cinnamon is uh, the only colour special um, that I'm yet to win at a, a Fife Federation club. Um, I have won it at the um, Merseyside border in Fife, but it's not affiliated to the Federation. So I'm yet to win it at a Federation affiliated show. Um, I've won second best cinema on a number of different occasions, but never quite got uh, the, main, the main event. So this year, um, I'm putting together uh, a new cinema line um, and I'm doing things slightly differently. So I'm starting this time out with a cinnamon, visual cinnamon uh, cockbird. Now normally I'd use carrier cockbirds and cinnamon hens, but this is the very beginning of the line. Um, we'll have a look at the birds that we're going to use with this cinnamon cock in a minute. Um, the variegated cinnamon cock bird is a nice bird. He is in fact going to be our bird of the week, so we'll have a closer look at him a little bit later on. He won his class a couple of times out at specialist shows, and he was second best champion cinnamon at the inaugural Federation show. He's a decent stock bird. He's got some real quality behind him. His grandfather was a variegated yellow that we met in season two of the Canary Room. It took me some time to get him from Gerald. He'd been a class winner at the Midlands show and there was something like 60 odd birds in the class. So he was a very, very good bird. I've got his daughter here. So his daughter forms part of the cinnamon line. She's on a blue ring. We've got a variegated yellow cock here. Now, also a part of the mix, we've got a self cinnamon yellow hen just in the cage behind me. Now, you haven't misheard me. She's a self and she's a yellow. And I've got only a cinnamon yellow cock, so I'm going to breed 
cinnamon to cinnamon, yellow to yellow. Now, cinnamon has the effect of narrowing the feather, visually, certainly, at least. And so, um, there's a risk in this pairing, um, uh, but I take that risk, you know, in, in knowledge, in detailed knowledge. All of the offspring from the cinnamon to cinnamon pairing will be cinnamon. Um, the likelihood is all of the offspring will be um, yellow feathered birds. I say likelihood because part of the reason that I'm doing this is this bird is what I would class as a borderline intermediate feather. So last week we talked about the difference between yellow and buff feathers. There is an intermediate in between where a bird is not quite a yellow and not quite a buff is the best way of describing it. Um, so she is borderline intermediate. And so I think the cock will take that bird. And I think that could produce some nice things for me. So as we take a look, we've got a variegated buff hen here, which is, as I said earlier, the daughter of the very nice carrier variegated yellow cock. In here, we've got one of our allied birds. We've got a white. Now, the cinnamon over the white will breed fawns, and um, it will also breed normals. Um, there is a new classification for fawns, and I'm keen. There's some nice fawns on the bench last year, and I'm very, very keen to, uh, to have a little tip at that myself. So we'll see what happens here. And then the final hen that we've got is a variegated. This variegated is bred out of the mother and son pairing, which form part of our clear line. So I'm gonna put those birds together. Because it's a visual cock, I'll be able to tell the sex of the offspring at birth. Certainly from this pair, the white hen and the other variegated. I'll be able to tell them because all the pink eyed birds and the visual cinnamon birds will be hens. The non-visual birds will be cocks and they will carry the cinnamon gene. Cinnamon is sex linked. Lots of people get concerned about cinnamon. Oh, it's a hidden evil in our shed. I don't believe that for a minute. I think the cinnamon is a very, very nice bird. I think as long as you keep it excellent records, you'll be absolutely fine. So that's our cinnamon line. Next time out, we'll look at the Allied to Whites and let's see how our cinnamon line gets on. If we can't breed some birds, and whilst I don't expect to compete for top honours with the cinnamons in year one, I'd hope that they do something on the bench for me later in 2020. So that's our, that's our cinnamons, and we'll see what happens with those over the months ahead. Um, you just take a little look around the canary room now, because the birds are really starting to come into condition. Um, we singled the reds off uh, along with all of the other birds. Um, and the, red, the reds, are, you can see just by their natural flightiness that they're starting to show the telltale signs of being ready. The fifes have done the same. In fact, we'll see a little bit later on that we've had some matings with the fights already. But the subtle tips that you're looking for, you can see the footage here. This is not so subtle. One of the green yellow hens has decided to um, strip some of the paint from the cage and is picking up. One of our clear buff hens, you can see just messing around there with some um, sawdust in the back. Hens poking heads through cages, looking interested. We we'll see the Norwich cock, and we'll trim the Norwich today along with the borders. But the Norwich cock, um, in full voice, singing, belting out. So the birds are slowly coming into condition. We can see as well, the garden birds are doing the same. So we'll have a little look in the garden now. We have a new visitor to the feeding station, a dunnock. Um, we have a, a pair of robins um, that are in the garden now. So there's two different shots um, of robins. We've got our friends, the blackbirds. So let's enjoy the garden birds just for a minute and then we'll come back 
inside the canary room. When the birds in the garden lovely, uh, it's uh, an element of the show which I'll try and capture um, as we move on the, uh, the starling. Oh, that was a particular favourite of mine. Um, <clears throat> my neighbours uh, must actually think I'm bonkers because they'll often see me um, running outside filming birds with a phone, a camera, whatever I can lay my hands on. So, uh, yeah, hopefully I'll still be around for future episodes. <laughs> Bird of the week this week is a variegated cinnamon yellow cockbird. He is the uh, the main hope we've got of forming a hopefully very competitive cinnamon line. As I say, he did well on the show bench. Um, he's in uh, good condition. This bird bred out of um, his mother did well. His mother was a, a specialist winner. She was second best cinnamon, like him. Um, so I'm hoping that you know there's, it's in the blood there. Um, down from that line, um, I had a, a variegated buff cock and a variegated yellow cock from Gerald. Um, both were cinnamon carriers. Uh, one was a best in show. Um, the variegated buff cock won a number of, uh, of colour specials um, as well as best in show. Um, but this cinnamon yellow cock, um, you know, difficult to see the birds at this time of the year because you know they're in fitness, they're in full feather. But he's a beautiful bird, and that's this week's bird of the week. It's time for this month's top tips. It's the beginning of March in the Canary Room. I mentioned it in the show last time out. Um, Facebook is a wonderful thing. Um, you'll see people with different birds at different stages with young in the nest. Uh, it is not a time to panic. Um, the uh, the, the sort of bigger canaries, the borders, the um, Norwich, although we saw the Norwich cock um, in good form and fettel, they're two or three weeks away um, from being ready to breed. I'm going to trim them today. That will knock them back a little bit. Um, the uh, fives, we have had some um, breeding uh, of the fives. We've got three that we'll pop some nest bands in in a minute for. So um, we filmed the show normally on a Sunday. Uh, they started the mating process on Tuesday. And we can see some footage here. Uh, caught one of the cocks just post mating. Um, so I, um, one of the things that I do, one of our first top tips is I use um, little, little screws on the cages. And as we can see here, I will run a cock into a cage and just hang the cage on the front of the um, hen. So I'm not running the cock into the nest just yet. Um, they can see each other, they can make a connection. Um, they've been overwintered with these pairs. So what I'm looking for is the signs. I'm looking for the hens, you know, if a hen squats, then you know it's very, really ready. Um, the, some of the hens will trill back. Um, so just subtle signs at this time of the year, just to keep an out, uh, look out for. Um, so our first top tip is the screw on the top of the cage and just hanging a, a training cage on there so the bird can see its mate. Um, our second top tip uh, is stickers. Um, now this is something I'm doing new this year in the canary room. Um, what you'll notice here is um, I bought these off Amazon. Um, they are sheets of red uh, and we've got 10 different colors stickers. Um, and what I'm gonna do just for my own um, record, so I make a, a note in a diary, I have a diary every year. Um, so I make a note in this diary of when birds have mated, um, and then when I set eggs and when eggs are due. Um, and then this transports back into my breeding records, which I keep on the computer in an Excel file. So uh, red means that the bird has been mated. Um, yellow, I'm using a traffic light system. Yellow will mean that the hen is laying and green will mean that there are chicks in the nest. Um, so I've got three cages that have got red stickers on. Um, the older hen here, older five hen, she was one of the first to mate. There's a ticked buff hen here who's mated. 
and um, just down here there's a, a self green yellow hen who's also mated um, so steady start um, but I'm okay with that I think the worst thing that you can do is panic um, another top tip and it's a, a real um, a real challenge for canary breeders um, is when you've done your pairings stick to them now that might mean that you um, that you miss rounds particularly as we do in the canary room with the fights where we're running a five cock over two or three hens and um, the cock and the hen might not come into condition at the same time now what i won't do is run an alternative cock over that hen now i know people who do uh, and it's absolutely their decision, their choice. But I've spent quite a little, uh, a lot of time building the gene pool of these birds, understanding the pedigree of these birds. So I don't just want to breed a quantity of birds. I want to breed a quality of birds, which means that the intended mates are the intended mates. Now, if I only get one round out of that pair, I'll only get one round out of it. Um, but that's what I will do to make sure that I get the right quality of birds that I want. So. They're our first two top tips for the month. Um, we're going to trim some birds up now. Now, the reason that we trim birds is because the border and the knowledge have an excess of feather and it can prevent them from reproducing. Don't trim the fives, don't trim the reds, don't trim any other of the varieties, but the borders and will and the Norwich. So um, the key thing, uh, as we can see here, is that we don't want to cut the guide feathers because that's where the, the, um, the, the sort of fertilization process will take place. So we don't want to cut those off because we'll really, really put in jeopardy the, the season. We'll give the birds nails a trim at the same time um, and then we'll pop them back into their stock cages. The um, final top tip, uh, for, for the beginning of March, you say we're always putting the lights forward every week. We're on 12 hours now. It's the food. So we're going to give uh, a little bit of green food. We've also got for the British birds, and we'll see that in the, the Red Bull Diaries shortly, uh, we've got some live food in. Uh, so the return of the mealworm. Um, so they're back in the shed now and we'll start to give those just at the beginning of March just to the British, we don't give those to the Canaries but just to the British finches um, just to, to bring them on um, so what I'm going to do um, before we move on to the Red Pole Diaries is I'm going to pop some of the nest pans in I'll put a little bit of nesting material in as well and we'll have a look at those birds see if they start to build up Our other job, our top tip for March, is to get your rings ordered. Um, you can see here I have a, a ring holder. Um, I've got all my Federation rings on there, my five fancy Federation rings. I've also got my IOA rings for the British, although it'll be some time before they breed. And the um, reds and the uh, red poles um, and borders. So you can see the IOA rings. I close ring all my birds, um, so we need to get these in early. I know from the feedback that I get online for the show, and thank you very much for all of that feedback, that the uh, Red Pole Diaries is one of your um, favourite parts of the show. Uh, I think it's because you like to see me suffer. Um, this episode is no different. It's the highs and lows or the lows and lows of bird keeping. It's time for the Red Pole Diaries. Well, what can I say? Tragedy has struck in the canary room with the Red Poles. Um, 
I think I mentioned it in the last episode that these little birds are not afraid to die. Uh, and unfortunately, um, I came in uh, just on Thursday last week to find what I think um, is the cock bird. Now, many bird keepers will tell you it's always the hen that dies at this time of year. But um, I think uh, it was a cock bird, a cock silver bird. Um, so bought a pair of silvers in. Uh, unfortunately, I came in in the morning, fed the birds, watered them as I do every day. Uh, and it seemed to be okay. And I came in in the afternoon and I found it dead on the floor. Um, so the lows and lows. Um, what can we say? Um, you know, unfortunately, it's part of uh, what comes with the territory with bird keeping. Um, the British in particular, I don't know, we've had some really stormy weather. It's a nice day today, but we've had some stormy weather. Um, I, I just don't know. No obvious signs uh, on the birds. So um, I've put one of the cock birds that I bred last year, at least I think it's a cock with the hen. Um, what's particularly frustrating is the two silvers had seen feeding each other. Um, so I put that together. What I've also done is split the Siberian goldfinches. Now, the Siberian goldfinches have uh, attracted an awful lot of, um, of comment and feedback uh, as to the normal goldfinches. So they're new to me this year, the Siberians. Um, I thought I had two uh, Lutino hens and a Yumo split Lutino cock. Uh, I'm not sure if one of the Lutino hens might be a cock. Um, it's whistling away. Now I know hens, certainly hen canaries will whistle, um, but it's quite a bold dominant bird, so I don't know. Anyway, I've split the birds, um, and you'll see here what I've done, that there's nothing sacred in this house. So baby Charlotte, who's just three weeks old now, um, one of her muslin cloths has been used to cover the cage of the, um, the, the, the goldfinch cock. So he's on the outside of the cage now. He's just in a little standalone cage. Um, so he can call to but can't get to the hen. And the idea of this is to just make a, put a little bit of absence in, you know, make the heart grow fonder. Um, and uh, I'll reintroduce him in a couple of weeks' time. Um, we are going to give the birds some live food. We're also going to put their, um, their nest boxes in. Now, I don't expect them to go down anytime soon, but I'm going to put their nest boxes in, um, certainly on the goldfinches anyway, uh, and I'll, I'll put the reds on before, before the next episode. So, um, one of the things that we, uh, we use for the birds, uh, for the British, is we use um, fake ivy. Now, this is bought from a shop in the UK called Dunelm. Um, this is a piece which I've cut in half. So this is plenty big enough. So I think it's about three pounds 50. Um, I'll use some black cable ties just to tie it round. And we'll have a look at that in a minute um, as well. So I use this just to tie around, just to give them a little bit more privacy. Um, I use for the uh, the green, um, the green finches. I haven't got green finches, what am I talking about? Uh, it's because they're green. Um, I use for the red poles um, a green out of cage nest box. So we can see here, we've got doors on the cages. These come open um, and you can hang the cages on. So they're outside, they're external nest bands. I use a white variety for um, the goldfinches. They're slightly bigger. And for the actual pans themselves, for the red poles, I'll just use a normal canary nest lining pad. But for the goldfinches, I'm using a, um, a sort of hessian um, uh, one. Hessian coconut fiber one. Um, we're going to give the birds some uh, some green food. Um, we're going to give the birds some uh, live food, and we're going to give them some egg food as well. So let's take a look at uh, putting the nest boxes in and them devouring the food.
So that's the, the Red Pole Diaries for uh, another episode in the Canary Room. Um, <clears throat> we'll follow the trials and tribulations of the British throughout the season. Uh, you know, there, there will always be ups and downs in bird keeping. Um, they'll be a, a little bit uh, behind the rest of the birds in the canary room breeding. So I don't imagine we'll see um, you know, any kind of activity until May and um, maybe even June. And uh, maybe we'll see something earlier. Who, who knows? Um, it's time to go back on the road. So our back on the road this week is, uh, well, we're going back to Malta. It's, uh, it's going to be a two-part of this. Very similar to Swords, when I looked at the footage I got, uh, there was just too much to cram into one episode. Um, so I try and keep the Canary Room uh, you know, to about half an hour, uh, although I fear this episode might be longer again. Um, so I went to a trip, and massive thanks to Mark Sakluna, who, uh, who invited myself and Gerald Spencer over there. Great honour to judge. Some really nice standard of birds. Um, went over. It's uh, a Malta Cage Bird Society. Um, fantastic trip. Five days in Malta. Uh, we flew over on the Wednesday morning, judging starting on the, uh, the Thursday and then again on the Friday. Um, really, really lovely place. Some lovely quality birds. Um, and this time we got to see the sights of Malta as well, which was... Um, which was fantastic. You know, it's such a beautiful country, um, rich in history and, uh, and absolutely glorious. So, you know, in the cold December months, uh, a five day trip to Malta was, uh, was just what the doctor ordered. That's almost the end of the show. We've got room just for one question. It's question time. So our question today is around cages and it's come in on our YouTube channel um, and it's, a, it's an incredibly good question. Um, it's around, you know, what's the best cage to use? Well, you'll notice in the Canary Room that we use quite a traditional, uh, it's quite traditional in the UK anyway, method of sort of boxed cages. So they're um, wooden backs, wooden sides with a, a metal cage front on them. Um, there are uh, continental types of cages and the cage that we'll see in a minute which is housing the, um, the goldfinch cock um, that is more of a continental style so it's an all wire cage uh, and the all wire cage has um, a grill um, and, and it can be pulled out now a lot of the the goldfinch breeders particularly the siberian breeders will have um, all wire cages I have a traditional method of cages in the canary room, so they are box built with cage fronts. Um, these here, the flights behind me, and um, believe it or not, the trays for the flights behind me are in fact oil brick trays for cars. So it's amazing what you can find on Amazon. Um, I was looking for something that would go underneath there, um, which had decent depth that was plastic and I found these so I purchased three of them they they come out and I can clean the birds out um, easily and um, so there's no right or wrong with cages the the important thing is you think about when you're planning your your bird room you think about your cage configuration so that you've got enough cages for your young um, and that your cages can you know are flexible and um, the cages here in the main block just to the side of me here these cages will open up into a um, seven foot long um, cages which you know which is really really handy and um, so no right or wrong it's very much down to personal preference i have both here in the canary room thanks for getting in touch with the show and i hope that answers your question well that's all we've got time for today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the show. Thanks very much for watching. And thanks to everybody who has taken time to get um, in touch with the show. Um, I understand uh, couples are, are watching the show together. People are watching it on their big screen televisions, which terrifies me. Imagine seeing me full screen in your lounge. <laughs> what a horrible thought. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. 
and uh, I get a real great pleasure in making the show. Um, next weekend, I'm on the road, uh, especially for you in the Canary Room. So I will be um, down to the uh, down to Essex. I'm going to Basildon and Southend on Sea. So I'm going to spend the weekend <clears throat> on tour on the road. And um, first and foremost, we'll be going to see Julian's Canary Bird Room. So Julian has a stunning collection of reds. I'm very much looking forward to seeing them. And then I am going to see the Yorkie Supreme Stud. Now, I'm going to see Steve Domini. Um, I'll also try and get in and see Bob Pepper. Uh, it'll depend on, on traffic. Um, but I'm going to do two special full-length episodes um, of On The Road from those sheds. So I'm going to film them over the next couple of weeks. They'll take some time to edit and I'll release them over the next few months. So stay tuned to that. If you've liked the channel and you enjoy it, please subscribe. If you can and you're able, take a little click on the donation button. Uh, it helps with the production costs for the show and it is very, very much appreciated. Until next time, take care.